come looking for Pastor Troy again. You never know where you're going to find him. Well, here he is outside. Picking up trash. This must have blown in from that windstorm that we had the other day. There's nothing he won't do. Pastor Troy, how are you doing? Hey, Lori, how are you doing today? I'm good. Hey, I'm just out here cleaning up some trash that blew in from the storm, and man, it just reminds me of our own lives that sometimes the trash just piles up in our hearts, and the only way is to let Jesus Christ carry it out of your heart to come into your life and just to get rid of those things that you're carrying because he wants to haul it all away. So, George, thanks for taking that, my friend. Yep, no problem. I'll catch you later at the shop. Okay. Hey, I just want to welcome you guys to Heartland Community Church. If you're visiting here today, fill out a connection card in the back of the chair. We also want to remind parents that if you have a graduate, then get that information to Lori um, so we can get ready for graduations. Uh, we still have continued Bible studies going on. You can ask about those things. And hey, we're glad you're here this morning. The best is yet to come. Amen, Pastor. Yep. God bless you guys. God bless. Amen. Let's just stand together as a church family. Let's worship the Lord. I don't know about you, but there's no better place I want to be this morning than in his presence and, and with my family. Um, in this ever-changing world, we are so thankful that God is not changing and that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, let's just bow our heads and let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your presence. We ask for your Holy Spirit to come in and just to minister to each one of our hearts here, God. Uh, Father, I pray that the word of God will move swiftly and that we will go out and we will be doers of the word and not just hearers only, God. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your life. We thank you that you breathe your very spirit into us. We thank you that we don't have to do life by ourselves. Father, we are desperate for you, God. We can't do life on our own. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for the life and giving us life more abundantly, God. We just praise you and we honor you with our worship this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Breath 
It's your breath in our lungs. So we
clap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful, worship team. The Lord heard that. You guys, I, I just want to go ahead and be seated. I just want to welcome you to Heartland Community Church this morning where, where we come to worship God. We don't come to be entertained. We come to allow God to change our life. This morning, there's a, a forecast. God gave Cindy a word, and she's just going to share it briefly, and then Marcella, you're going to come up. I know we switch things on the go here quite often when the Holy Spirit tells us to do something. So Cindy, come share, and, and then Marcella will lead here for just a little bit. I try to get out of it, but God says, no, you're not going to get out of it. I'm like, I'm not going today. Yes, you are. I'm not talking. Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that song, Waymaker. Even when we can't see him, he's working. Even when we can't feel him, he's working. He never stops working. He's always, always on the go. Behind the scenes. In what you can't see or feel or know. So Pastor Troy said, I have a forecast. Um... Wednesday, when I got up, it was snowy, it was cold, it was windy. And the forecast said, it's going to be 60 today. I'm like, okay, we'll see about that. <laughs> and yesterday, I was in quick shop before I went to work, and the lady said, it looks like a nice day out there. And I said, yeah, it's a little cold and windy. But it's supposed to be in the 60s again today. And so I'm driving down the street, praying for my aunt who had a stroke. And God says, do you believe my forecast? Do you believe what I said is the true weather forecast no matter the circumstances that are going on right now in your life God has a forecast for it do you believe the forecast he has for you he said if you believe in me you'll be saved you and your household that's the forecast for me that's the forecast for you. Do you believe that God says you're healed? He said it. Do you believe the forecast? Do you believe it's going to be in the 60s today? Do you believe that weatherman? Do you believe that weatherman? He has a forecast. His forecast is for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope, to give you peace, to give you love. He is the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. He's given you a true forecast Believe that weatherman. Believe the forecast that's in the word of God. Is it still on? Cynthia, that, that was a wonderful word. That was right on. And I know that God knows, not me. God knows that was for somebody here today, and I can tell you who that was for, but I'm not going to. Let it touch your heart. God has a forecast for you. Hallelujah. Still amazes my heart to see when somebody cries when it speaks about Jesus. Still amazes my heart when somebody is so involved with the Holy Spirit. She was burning for the Holy Spirit here, and she was crying 
because she was telling the truth about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, Heartland Church. I'm here to share you the communion time. In a few minutes, our Pastor Troy will share a message with us to bless our hearts. And uh, it's so good because God rules in this place. Amen. Where we worship him, he rules. Every place where you worship God, he will come to rule. So if you are in your house and you feel alone and you feel Satan attacking you, just start to praise in his name. Just start to worship him and he will come and he will come. Because where God is worshiped, he, is, he, he will rule that place. He rule where he is worshiping. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we just want to worship you. We want to worship you, God, our creator. We want to worship you, Jesus, the son, our savior. And also, we want to worship you, Holy Spirit, our teacher. Come, Holy Spirit, to teach us. We need you, Holy Spirit, here. We need you, Holy Spirit, moving in this place. Hallelujah. Before I... Before we celebrate together communion time, I want to share with you about newness of life. Because Jesus is calling us to walk in newness of life. There's no reason to follow Jesus if he wants to remain in the same things, with the same mind, with the same actions. So every time when Jesus calls us to follow him, he calls us to renew our minds, our lives, to change our lives. Amen? God doesn't need time to prepare the promise. The promise is already prepared, but he needs time to prepare you for the promise. The promise is already there. Everything that he needs to put in the place for you is already there. But so why, Marcella? Why I still can't, I cannot see the promises in my life? Because he is preparing you. He is preparing you. He is renewing your mind. He is asking you to walk in this newness of life. Newness of life. Changing our minds every day. Once we decide to follow Jesus, we need to be able to transform ourselves every day. Every day you say no and you say yes. You say no for some things and you say yes for another things. You, when we accept Jesus, we accept Jesus to follow him. To follow Jesus, you are not saved because you come in the front and you say a prayer. You are not saved because you accept Jesus, but you are saved when you abandon sin. Amen. So maybe you come to the front and you said, yes, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. But you still do not abandon the sinner life, a sinner life. I still can remember in Brazil one guy, every Sunday he was there accepting Jesus. Every Sunday he was in front there when the pastor asked, is there anyone here who wants to accept Jesus? Just come. And that guy was there every morning every service accepting Jesus and then one day the pastor told him hey son you don't need to come here every Sunday that's okay you already accept Jesus that's fine and then the guy said no pastor but I, I'm still sinning I still need to accept Jesus now today again because hopefully this week it's going to be different and then the pastor said oh you are right you got it you understood better than most because this is the point. Maybe you did that prayer, accepting Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. But now it's time to move on. Now it's time to keep moving, renewing your mind. Newness of life, it's what Jesus is asking us. I don't know in your life, what are, are you striving or are you struggling with an old sin in your life? Today. The communion is here. The table is set. And the table reminds us about the cross. And Jesus died in that cross 
to clean our hearts, to clean the iniquity, iniquity in our hearts, to forgive our sins, but not for you to remain in the same place. But please move on. Keep changing every day, every day. What should I do today, Lord? What should I change today, Lord? What do you want to renew in my mind today, Lord? Please teach my heart. Teach my heart, Jesus, and help me to follow you. Because this is what means to be saved. Be saved means I abandon my sin. I do not live for sin anymore. Of course, every day we sin. But we need to strive to be better. We need to strive to be better, not comparing with other people, but with yourself. When you watch your life and you look to yesterday, you need to be better today. I want you to read with me. Open your Bible, book of Luke, chapter 6, because Jesus taught us some things about renewing our attitudes. So... Luke chapter 6, verse 25. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. If, you, if anyone hits on you, if anyone hits you on a cheek, let him hit the other one too. If someone takes your coat, let him have your shirt as well. Give to everyone who asks you for something. And when someone takes what is yours, do not ask for it back. Do for others just what you want them to do for you. If you love only the people who love you, why should you receive a blessing? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you receive a blessing? Even sinners do that. And if you lend only to those from whom you hope to get it back, why should you receive a blessing? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. No. Love your enemies and do good to them. Land and expect nothing back. You will then have a great reward. And you will be children of the most high God. For he is good to the ungrateful and wicked. Wow. Wow, my Lord. You were teaching us, Jesus. You were teaching us, Jesus. So this is about newness of life. This is newness of life. Jesus is teaching us to follow him. So today, before the communion table, before the table, it's time for us to examine ourselves. And I want to pray with you that are struggling to conquer the sin. Maybe it's an old sin. Maybe it's something that you cannot overcome. You cannot break through. But I'm here today to tell you that Jesus is asking you to renew your life, renew your attitudes. And just to be saved, you need to abandon the sin. The sin. You need to forsake the sin in your life. And you need to follow Jesus. Those few verses are just the very beginning, but it's what he's asking us to do. Amen. So let's pray now. God, our Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you because those who are in Christ are new creation. The old things are passed away, and the new is here. The new have come. Lord, we want to be new creators in your hand. Lord, we just need your help because we need to overcome sin. We need to conquer sin. So just help us. Send your Holy Spirit, Lord, because you already taught us what to do. Your word teaches us what to do every day. But, Lord, we want to do that, to follow the Bible, to walk in your word. So just help us, Lord. Today, we're going to break the bread, and we're going to remember 
that you paid the price on that cross. We're going to drink the juice. We're going to remember your blood. You pour out all your blood to clean, to clean our clothes, Lord. So just we receive that by faith. Hallelujah. Today is the day that the Holy Spirit is going to strengthen you to conquer the sin. Amen. This sin, it's not anymore to hold you back. Because Jesus is asking you to walk in newness of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, communion time now. Do you have your, your cup there? If you do not have, just raise your hands. It's time to celebrate. You are more than welcome to this table. Doesn't matter if you're, if you're not a member in this church. In Heartland Church, you are more than welcome because you are a member in the Jesus table. Amen? So just raise your hands. Somebody's going to serve you with the cup. And let's celebrate together because the sin, it's not over us anymore and we can conquer the sin. Even, even the old sins that are in, your, in our lives because Jesus died on that cross to give us life. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this precious moment. We thank you, Lord, because by faith, we can have a new life every day. When Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread in the last supper, and he broke the bread, and he said, this is my body, which I give to you. Amen. You can eat the, the bread now. Thank you, Jesus. The same way he took the wine. And he said, this is my blood. The seal of the new covenant. Jesus has a language of newness. And he said, this is the new covenant. I make a new covenant with you. The old things are passed away. And the new has come. You are receiving here today by faith. If you accept that, the Holy Spirit's going to guide you in a new life. In a new life. Because maybe you belong to a religion table. But God is asking you to follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. So he, we can celebrate this newness. He said, this is the new covenant with a seal with you to forgive your sins. And to give you a new life. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you are everything that we need. I just pray, Lord, that you can take care of your church. Just roll in this place, Lord. And just open the eyes. And just be with them always. Until the end. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I woke up this morning and was greeted by the sunrise. I made a simple meal enjoyed a moment of peace and stillness. I stepped into my vehicle and joined a million others traveling to work today. And I arrived safely. I spent most of the day at my job, doing the same familiar tasks that greet me every day work that provides for my needs. I took a walk in the park and received a smile from a stranger. I picked up a few groceries. I spoke with my parents. And then I met a friend for coffee. 
turned on the radio in my car. I sent a message to someone a thousand miles away. I washed my clothing. I returned home. A very ordinary day. experienced today could be considered unremarkable, but they are all profound blessings, the fingerprints of your hand. Help me to grasp the wonder in the small and the simple, to notice the miracles which surround me constantly, to see the beauty in the commonplace and take nothing for granted. Teach me to make gratitude a lifestyle, one which flows into love, rejoicing, and thankfulness every moment that I draw breath. Amen. Children's Church, you can be dismissed if you have a visiting, you have children here, send them back, they'll, they'll learn the Word of God and they'll have fun. Lori, can we start off, do you have that picture or something funny I wanted to share? This is going to put men on the spot here. All men should make coffee for their women, it says it right in the Bible, Hebrews. Yeah, I got that sent to me this week and I just rolled. And then I thought how many times my wife makes the coffee and it's ready on a timer for me every morning. I guess I better step it up. Or there's my wife. Or there. Hi, honey. Thank you. Hi, Jake. Man. Son, God is telling me how proud he is of you. That you've worked hard for 20 days that people didn't have their electricity, but you stayed out there and you stayed in the fight so people could have electricity in their home. And you and the rest of the guys, God's proud. Because we lay down our life for other people, not when it's always easy. And sometimes that's physical work. But you rest today. You rest today, my son. I'm proud of you. It's been hard for some of those Midwest guys out there they've had a lot of poles go over and they worked all last weekend they're getting there early they're working late and that's to care for other people and sometimes the grind gets hard when you have a family but what better way of a father just to tell his son that he's proud of him I'm proud because he works hard but I'm proud because he loves Jesus I'm proud because he listens to the Holy Spirit I'm proud because he loves his wife I'm proud because he takes care of his kids and teaches them in the way they should go at that age, I was not even half the man that he is. Not even half. Because he seeks after the Lord with everything that he's got in his home. God is the pathfinder. We're all searching for that path in that right direction and I think about how sometimes the grass is tall and maybe the weeds and, and you just want to mow that walking trail or that prayer trail or, or you guys have been out by the old 4-H grounds they got that walking trail and you all got to stay on the path if you get off the path you get lost maybe there's snakes and things that you don't want to get into but there's a path and, and life will get you off of this path if you're not watching carefully life will take you the wrong way the enemy's trying to constantly push you off the path of safety but when you set your focus and your standard on jesus christ you can't help but to be on the right path even when things around you are shaking even when things around you are getting torn down even when things around you just don't seem right or just don't seem like they're going your way jesus if he's out front of you you're on the right path amen Stop having fear and feed your faith. Stop allowing the enemy to tell you that it's not okay. Allow God to push you in the right direction, to lead you in the right direction. 
set your mind on the things above, Colossians 3, 2 says, and not on the things below. I'm, I'm amazed. You know, I, I, I was sitting there on the front row and we're taking communion and Marcella's taking what represents the blood and she's poured it in that cup. Did you know I could hear it pouring out? I could hear the pouring and it took me directly to the cross. How Jesus poured himself out, that sound. He just poured himself out. He gave himself up for our sins. He gave himself up so that you don't have to walk in a mess. That if you reset your focus on how Jesus loved his enemies, how Jesus loved his co-workers, how Jesus loved his family, how Jesus loved the church body, how Jesus loved his disciples and cared for them, you get to look at life differently. And you'll never look at life correctly unless you set your sights upon Jesus Christ. The world cannot give us one answer that continually works Some of you guys here today continually live in the ways of the world. That you're trying to find peace in the world when Jesus is the only one that can truly give it. And when you figure out how to totally give your heart and your life up to Christ, and it becomes more than just a prayer, it becomes a lifestyle, you'll have more peace than you've ever known. Those little things in the world won't shake you. Jesus said that his peace he left with us. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In his house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But then we're all like Thomas and we go back to the doubt. We start doubting that God can't take care of our circumstance. We start doubting that, that, that God is not big enough to sell our home, that God isn't big enough to, to move forward in things. But when we worship and we humbly go before the Lord and we humble ourselves and and we allow ourselves to become meek and, and we give the power and the glory to God and we walk in his rest and his power, all those things that we're trying to make decisions on become easy. I heard a pastor tell me one time, and this is truth for me too, Two two mistakes for me that I made in my life is one, I'm not patient sometimes and I don't wait on the details when I'm praying. I I like to get stuff done. I I just like to go after stuff and just get it done. And that gets me in trouble sometimes because I'm not waiting on the details. I, I remember... Marcella, you shared this with some of us a while back. He's, and actually, it was probably for me. But she said, Troy, don't be so efficient, be effective. Don't be so efficient, be effective. Because we're, we're always wanting to be efficient, get it done, and, and I'm a person that don't like to do things twice. If, if I have to go back and redo something my guys have done for me, I get a little upset because time is valuable and I like to be efficient. But sometimes when it comes to the ministry or we come to, to helping somebody, we're worried about being too efficient instead of slowing down, waiting on the details and becoming effective in someone else's life. The other thing that I've missed a lot is I wish I would have been bold, more bold. Just to be bold in those moments to to stand up for Jesus when you know you should or to be bold to go to shake that person's hand and truly witness to them. To be able to ask the right questions on their doorstep. To be the kind of bold that that Jesus was when, when he came from a perfect place and he came here and he gave up his life. He became bold. Paul became bold. There was a moment in Peter's life when he denied Christ three times and and he wasn't bold, but but then when he saw what Jesus did and he saw that Jesus followed through on his death on the cross and his resurrection of life, Peter became bold about that. 
God's wanting to encourage you today to be bold. To be bold. And, and I was gonna, I'm going to preach a little bit on the Sermon on the Mount today. Luke likes to call it the Sermon on the Plains. But the Sermon on the Mount took place on the north shore of, of, of the Sea of Galilee. And there's a lot of blessings, and, and we sang about those this morning, and we saw those before communion, those scriptures on blessings. But when you look at the Beatitudes, it all starts about a blessing when, when you live the right way in life, when you're obedient to what God's calling you to be. And so God's wanting us to look at life differently that he has blessings for us even in the midst of a, a very torn and hard world God wants to change things and so we go to Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 through 12 and I just want to read that and, and remember what I said at the beginning pull up Matthew chapter thank you Lord Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 through 12 but listen Remember that opening statement where I said, don't come to church to be entertained. Come to church to be changed. Come to church to be worshiping God. Those are the two things there. Worship God. We come to church to worship God, and we come to church to be changed. Matthew chapter, verse, chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying... Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be obtained mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of, of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Again, we need to learn in life to rejoice always. We need to look at that verse, chapter 1, verse 1, when it says poor in spirit. What does that mean? It means moral poverty, to realize that we should have a need for God, that we cannot walk through life on our own, that, that we should be brought down to a lower level and realize that God is above us. We are poor in spirit. We can't do this on our own. Moral spirit, poor in spirit, opposite of arrogance. This is probably a better way of saying it. You have a desperate need for God. We all have a desperate need for for something greater than ourselves because when we live in ourselves, when we only think of ourselves, we become prideful we find out that it doesn't work we become broken as last week's sermon we're often broken because of the way we've lived our life but but jesus stood up and said be poor in spirit and realize that you have a desperate need for me and when you're poor in spirit when you get that right the reward is the kingdom of heaven when you humble yourself and you come before Christ and you make him your savior, your reward is the kingdom of heaven. Listen, guys, that is worth waiting for. That is worth getting it right. You guys, you can, Solomon said in, in Ecclesiastes, I think it was chapter 12, maybe verse 13, Solomon had everything. He had all the riches a man could ever want. And he worked his whole life so hard under the sun he told and he worked and he worked and he worked and then he realized he was getting old and he wasn't going to take any of that stuff with him it was all just going to be gone are we like solomon and seeking so hard after the things of this world that that we're not even looking towards god and looking towards where we're going to be at when our life truly ends okay so think of this 
what you have isn't going to last here forever. You're not going to be here forever. Even if you live to be 100 years old, eventually you're going to give up everything that you worked for. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And then whatever decision you made or didn't make, that's what you're stepping into forever, forever, forever. See, we often, we often worry about our retirement plan, and you should plan for retirement. It says a wise man looks to the future. But listen, you, the most important retirement plan you can have is knowing that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, so when you die, when you pass away, you're with Jesus Christ, and you're not with Satan. Can you believe what some preachers preach and tell you that there's not even a hell? What the hell? I'm serious. Think about that. They're telling people that all roads lead to heaven. That is hogwash. And, and then you just, you just send a guy to believe that if he's just good and changes enough tires along the side of the road that he's going to heaven. And then when he dies, he wakes up and in hell and we caused them to stumble the church is causing people to stumble I sat with someone the other night and ate with them and, and they started talking religion well maybe if I do this I know I'm a good person maybe if I do that I'm a good person and my spirit started to move and I said oh it's only about Jesus you guys we we have to become poor in spirit and give Jesus the credit and realize that we have a decision to make that Jesus Christ died on the cross and we need to follow him and he conquered death. The wages of sin is death and we're all going to have a death, but it's the kind of life you have after death. Two choices, again, kind of going back to two things, two choices, heaven or hell. You choose. It's totally up to you. You can get what you want. If you want to worry about everything and all the riches of the world and how you treat people, mistreat people, and don't love Jesus, and you want to go to hell, you can choose that. And a lot of people can just keep doing what they're doing. Or you can step over into the goodness, the greatness, the glory, the love of Jesus Christ. You can step into that. But you have to make that choice. Don't let the things of the world tell you that you can just do whatever you want. Jesus carries on in the, in the next verse and says, those who mourn will be comforted. The re after you're, you, he just keeps building. It's like a home. He's laying one more brick in this sermon and he keeps building and he keeps building. And, and that mourning that he's talking about is mourning over your personal sin. You're, you're, you're sad over the actions that you've done. And Jesus is saying we should weep and mourn over those sins and we should step aside of those and we should change the way we think and we should change the way we do things and we should change the way we speak. It's a spiritual mourning and grieving. You remember it said when Jesus went to raise Lazarus from the dead, he groaned in his spirit. Now Jesus didn't sin at all, but he was groaning over death. Death makes a man groan. And so Jesus says, when you deal with your personal sins, when you realize that they're there and you're not happy about your actions, your reward, you get comforted. The Holy Spirit helps us in this. The Holy Spirit helps us do a self-evaluation of ourself, which leads us into forgiveness. Man, I don't know about you, but, but the more I fall in love with Jesus and the more the Holy Spirit becomes stronger in me, I'm walking like this. Because I don't want to mess up. And when you do, he won't let it go till you ask for forgiveness. Man, he just keeps bringing it up. He just keeps bringing it up. And I don't want to have to be in that state all the time where he has to bring it up. So I'm just going to choose a life to walk in righteousness. And then there's so much peace. You get to have peace when you walk in righteousness. 
all those things don't bother you anymore because you know that each day you're putting your feet on the floor, you're seeking after the things of God. Man, I love that. Jesus said, blessed are those who are meek. When you're, when you're meek, it says you get to, to, hum, you get to inherit the earth. What is meekness? It's a humbleness, but it's a giving up of power, putting God above yourself. It's being under God's power and under God's control. That doesn't mean that you're weak and, and, and you agree with everything and you bow down to everything. Sometimes you do have to take a stand and God gives you the correct kind of power. But realize that you're not all powerful and God is. That's meekness. Second Samuel chapter or ver, chapter 22 verse 33. Do you have that? God is my strength and power and he makes my way perfect. Let me ask you today, is God your strength just like the verse said is God your power because that pathfinder he's wanting to make your way perfect. He's wanting to make your way perfect. Where we're weak, he makes us strong. He is the way maker. That song that we sing, he does light up the darkness. We have such a blessing in Christ Jesus. God starts out every one of these with a blessing. The next one is those, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. Verse 6 says, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Righteousness should be valuable to us, something that we can't go, go without. Like when we think of hunger and thirst, we obviously think about food. And then we think about those times that we're out working and we just need something to drink. And we're just craving that, that hamburger so much. But it becomes an internal desire to walk in righteousness in right relationships. And when you do that, when you walk in right relationships, you're filled, you're satisfied, and you're ready to go on. That is your reward. <laughs> this, this is kind of a funny story. I, I don't know. I, I remember... Uh, I was in Wichita when I was taking classes through A-G-K-S-O-M, Psalm, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but through the Assemblies of God. I was, I, class got out at 10 o'clock, and I had terrible habits, and Carrie wasn't there to cook for me, so I went to the IHOP at 10 o'clock, and I had chocolate pancakes and sausage, eggs, and bacon right before I went to bed. I mean, I had a four-course meal. And, and I go back to my motel room, and and I'm just laying there on my bed praying. And I fell asleep. And by 2 o'clock in the morning, God woke me up. And I was so hungry. I mean, I had hunger pains. And I said, Lord, how can I be hungry? You saw what I just ate. How can I be hungry? And God said, Troy, do you hunger and thirst after righteousness? This is, this is what it feels like. Is, that, that, is your stomach a greater desire than me? How you look at food, that desire when you're starving to death, is that the desire that, that, that you come after with me in all righteousness and right relationships? And the first relationship you need to get right is the one where you're walking with Jesus Christ daily. And then you need to get your relationships around you right to walk in righteousness to hunger and thirst with that, that kind of hunger, with that kind of thirst. God wants to fill you and satisfy you. Do you know when you're fasting, the hunger pains? They keep coming, but the more you go in prayer as the weeks go on, the more you focus on Jesus, the easier it becomes. And he starts to take that hunger away because your focus is on him and not on the steak. 
Your focus is on him and and not on the sickness. Your focus is on him and not in the workplace. Your focus is on him in your marriage and it's getting better and better because your focus is on him and you're talking to your spouse the right way and you're being patient with your spouse because your focus is on him. Where's your focus? We become what we focus on. We become what we read. We become what we listen to. We become what we drink. Are you drinking from his cup? Or is there a cup you're drinking from that you should not be? Drink from the cup of Jesus Christ. Eat from his table. (laughs) Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, verse 7, for mercy will be theirs. If you want mercy for yourself, then you have to be merciful. You, you, need to ha- you have the power to forgive somebody, forgive them, let it go. John 3, 16 and 17, we know that verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God didn't come into the world to condemn it to save it Jesus came to save us not to condemn us not to beat us up was was Jesus not merciful think about that Hmm. don't hold back forgiveness Some, somehow, unforgiveness just builds up such hate in your heart. And then it starts to build things that, that aren't even true about the other person. The enemy wants to keep adding to the unforgiveness, and he does. But Jesus said, I'm, I'm merciful. The wages of sin are death, and I, I came to save the world when I could have came just to condemn you. I could have just came to point the finger. I could have just came to lash out at you. But Jesus came, and he allowed himself to be the lamb that was slain, the sacrifice. He didn't condemn us. He saved us. He was merciful. We serve a merciful God. Remember in the Garden of Eden, everything was perfect and God said it was good and then man sinned and and now we're dealing with all this sin and so God sends his son Jesus and God was merciful to us through the love of Jesus Christ. He laid down his life and became that sacrifice for our sin. What someone needs to hear today is your focus needs to be on the cross. Your focus needs to realize while you were still walking in sin and still doing things that you shouldn't be, Jesus willingly gave up his life and loved you. He forgave you right away. He forgives you today. He wipes you white as snow. He wants to turn your life into some new creation. But some of you are not forgiving. Some of you are just withholding those words that you can walk up to your friend or your family member and just say, you know, that thing I've been holding against you, I forgive you. You need to learn to receive forgiveness. When people ask you for forgiveness and you know that they mean it, don't withhold it from them because that's just as bad. If somebody really comes to you and asks you for forgiveness, I don't know, I don't know what they've done to you, but you, you need to receive it and just, and just allow the Lord to work in your life and your heart and take that pain and that hate and that hurt away. Receive forgiveness and give forgiveness because Jesus Christ was merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. The, the, the reward is a, is a manifestation of God in your life. David said, create a clean heart, O God, in me and a renewed spirit. A pure heart is a man of integrity, a woman of integrity, to seek after to do what's right. Psalms chapter 24, verse 3 through 5. Psalms chapter 24. 
who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of salvation. You guys want to serve the God of salvation? You want to serve the God who holds your life in his hands and at any time he can call you home. But if he calls you home, have you made the decision to be in God's kingdom? Because if you haven't, it won't be home. It'll be misery. But Jesus said to, to be blessed are the pure in heart. I want everyone to realize that when you live a life after Christ, when you seek a life after Christ, there's many blessings that come in the tough times and the hard times. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they will be called children of God. Jesus said, I mentioned it earlier in John chapter 14, verse 27, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. We serve a God who's handing out peace left and right when you allow him to walk daily with you in all situations. Focusing on the salvation of Jesus Christ should bring peace in your life. In verse 10, blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. Yes, people often make fun of us when we walk in faith in Christ. But your reward, it says, is the kingdom of heaven. We have to give up ourselves to find what's important in life. To have gain, you've got to give up yourselves. The prophets were persecuted and even sent to the stake to be martyred and killed because they spoke out about the announcing of the kingdom of God. God says that there's blessings when you stand up and speak for him. And not everybody's going to agree with you in the world today, I promise you. But we're going to be persecuted. But God says, stand in the persecution. Stand and walk faithfully. Keep your eyes on me, Troy. Don't look to the left or right. Just say what I'm telling you to say. Move forward when I tell you to move and talk about the cross. You can, hey, you can never, some of you guys that haven't shared the word of the Lord very much and you're trying to figure it out, you can never, never go wrong when you share the finished work of the cross. Just start right there. Just start right there. Tell them about Jesus and tell them about the cross that he died on. Start right there. God's wanting to show you who he really is. He's wanting to, to show you that there's blessings when, when you walk in the rationalization of who he is and what he's done for you. There's so much more to that Sermon on the Mount. You, you could preach eight or nine different sermons. But he mentions eight to nine blessings when you walk in obedience. Obedience brings blessing. Worship team, if you'll come forward. Obedience brings blessings. What's God calling you to do today? He wants you to receive your blessing. He wants you to receive the assurance of, of salvation in his kingdom in life after death. If that's all we ever got, that would be more than enough. That's the greatest thing that we can ever receive or ever tell anybody about is the gift of Jesus Christ and what you receive in that. And I know coming up here, we're getting ready to celebrate Easter. And how Jesus changed everything. By the way he walked, by the way he loved, by the way he acted, by the way he cared for you. Listen, if you're here today and you're hurting in your heart, if there's things that you need to take before God, I, I pray that, that you just simply do that. Just talk to him. He doesn't want you to, to be hurt. He doesn't want that nagging pain that's still on you every day to be there. He wants to change your life and make it peaceful. 
He wants you to rest in his assurance, the gospel truth of the cross. I encourage you to live that life every day.
was that it's about religion. You see, religion lies. Religion is deceptive. Religion tells us that we have to go out and we have to do good works. And by those good works, we'll be saved. This is kind of what Tula was touching on today. But in truth, in truth, guys, we cannot be saved by our good works. It is because we are saved, we will do good works. So I think we're going to close with that today. Because we are saved, because of His mercy, His grace, we'll go out and we will do good works. But we're not going to go do good works in order to become saved. We are saved by His grace, by His mercy. And that's the word that He has. So I'm just going to close in prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that your spirit is alive. I thank you that you are moving in this place. I thank you that you gave me that word. I thank you that they are not my words. I thank you that you spoke into Troy and that you shared that with him because they went along with what you taught there in Matthew 5 that, that he was talking about, that Sermon on the Mount, that we must rid ourselves of pride and selfishness, that we must be meek, that we must be humble, that we must go out and serve one another, put others in front of ourselves. That is living like Jesus today. We do not want to live like the evil of the world. We do not want to live like that evil one, the one who puts himself above everyone else. We never see once in Scripture where Satan is putting others before himself. He never does that. And so we want to be the opposite of that. We want to be the ones that go out, that put our that put others in front of ourselves so that we can be meek, so that we can be humble, so that we can receive all that you have for us. I pray that as we go out this week, I pray that each and every person here today would share the love of Christ Jesus with someone. All that we would not judge anyone, that we would not pass.